morning. It's great to be in the house of the Lord, and thank you. We have a wonderful group today for, for, for the Temple Bible Class Hour, and uh, we're going to learn some things from the Word of God today. Uh, we're looking for two more weeks for the, for the end of the contest, and uh, we're considering again, you know, those prizes for bringing the most people, and we'd like to set a goal for 80 in this Bible class in two weeks. That means all of us have to work hard, all right? Another thing, uh, 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 a, friend of, a friend of mine, J uh, Jack Sammons, he used to be with the, with the Sammons family. He's got a quartet right now, and uh, he showed up to help his son mow my grass. And I asked him to clear his schedule so uh, for the 15th to be here to sing in our Bible class and the morning service. So if you, how many of you would be in favor of having a quartet do a song in here and, and support it uh, with love offerings and stuff? So at the end of our service today, the next few weeks, we're going to receive love offerings to help with, with uh, the expenses of the contest as well as uh, the quartet that will be here and I hear they're really good. I know a lot of their singers that in the past uh, of the uh, of, of the uh, Pruitt family, they're they're great, and most of you will know them. All right, let's look in the Word of God today uh, to the Book of Ephesians, chapter five, to start. I have several uh, scriptures to share with you, but I love picking out subjects that's important to our lives and important to the Lord, because that is who we're responsible for. So uh, we need to, uh, let me ask you a question. How many of you, you know, all, I know all of you may not have children and be where you had to raise them, but th those of you that had families and raised your children, how many of you were really proud and blessed when you had obedient children. Amen. How many of you were very, very disappointed when you had unruly children? All of us, right? Well, you know, we as God's children are children of God. And we're going to find out today uh, some results of disobedience disobedience. Now, this is to produce us to be obedient, right? But unless we know what disobedience is, we're not going to know what obedience is. So I want us to see some scriptures today on the subject, disobedience, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Here's the instruction from God uh, from Paul to the Ephesians, and of course, this is to all believers. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger or unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. We want to make sure now there's a list there, and the list goes on far beyond what I've got here. But God's got his rule book starting with the Ten Commandments, but it's more than the Ten Commandments, by the way, which nobody can keep, because if anything ever comes between you and God, 
you've broken the first commandment. And if you break the first commandment, you're guilty of all of the commandments to be broke. It's to prove that we cannot, in our human flesh, keep the righteousness enough to get to heaven. That's what that's all about. So today we know that there's a fallen race, and we used to be among those who uh, were alienated from God before salvation. But when we become children of God, we have to still be obedient children as by the commandments of God. So we'll all agree to start with that we all love obedient children. Amen? How many of you love disobedient ones? No, you love obedient children. And if we expect our children to be obedient to us as parents, it's just common sense that we who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ ought to be obedient to him as we would have our children be obedient unto us. All right? With that thought in mind, uh, I want to talk about original disobedience because in order to know what obedience is, we have to know what disobedience is, and this comes right back to the origins. Now, there's some scriptures I want to... I want to show you uh, the book of the book of Romans, chapter five, and again, this is the Romans chapter five, verses twelve through fifteen. Now, this is the reason that goes all the way back to Adam in the garden, and we'll go back there for just a moment in a few moments. But this is speaking that one man. Uh, Adam, look at verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, when Adam sinned in the garden, remember, uh, God created Adam and Eve. That's the only actual people he created with, out of the dust. Then he created the systems within them for all the earth to be replenished and people to be born, all right? So when that one man, Adam, sinned, what did God say? He said, the day you, you can have everything but one tree, one fruit, you're not to eat of the tree of, of good and knowledge. And if you eat that tree, ye shall surely die. Now, he gave that commandment to Adam, not to Eve, because when he wrote that commandment, uh, he, he had not brought forth uh, Eve out of the rib of Adam at that point. So it was up to the man to teach his, his uh, wife, stay away from that tree, all right? That's a, that's a command of God. All right, now, when God says something, you have to obey it. If you don't, there's consequences. That's what we need to see, that the disobedience caused the consequences. Now, uh, down through my years, there have been so many uh, people. Let me read thir verses 13 and 14, and I'm going to tell you the reason that, and answer the question about all those that's asked it before if God knew man would sin, then why did, why did he create them? Is it fair for one man to die and the whole world to be condemned? We're going to answer that. And it comes from this next statement in verse 13. Pay a special note. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Now, it's talking about the rule of law. In other words, we can look at our land right now, and if there was no laws and, and no police force and no, no laws in our land, you could do anything and not be uh, uh, accountable for it. Any horrible thing. Why is laws made? Because to keep the wicked and the evil out. But when the law comes in, and people, there's a law, that brings responsibility to 
everyone in our land, all right? In other words, you could drive as much as you want, drive without a license. You could do anything you want. You could steal and loot like they're trying to do like the, in our society today. And no consequences, no judgment, no wrong. Everybody do what's right in your own eyes. That, that would be it, Law, a lawless society. Now, we're living in right now with, with great laws in our land and in our Constitution, but they seem to be ignored. They seem to be ignored. And I'm going to move on because I don't want to get political, but, you know, our, our nation is in a, in a mess right now. But the, the law brings responsibility to, to everybody. So I want to tell you the reason I'm talking about uh, disobedience because this, is, this book is God's law. He wrote it. He says this book will be opened at the judgment, at his word and his law. Every soul is accountable to God and his law. God gives the commandments in here, obey this. Little children, follow God. Walk in purity, walk in holiness. Stay away from the world, uh, separation from the world, and, and live right. God gives all of these do's and don'ts in the word of God. So when God said don't do something, uh, if, if you do what God says not to do, what does that make you? Disobedient, Right? If you obey what God says, that makes you an obedient child, all right? So that's common sense to, to all of us. So back, all the way back to the Garden of Eden. So when God gave the law uh, down from heaven and it came, now the Old Testament saints, all they had was, was a Pentateuch, the law of, the law of Moses and, and those things up until the New Testament came. We're now under the New Testament. We now have the completed canonical word of God for every word God wants us to have and to know is all in this book. Every answer is in this book because it was written by God. It's endorsed by God. It will be judged by God and our lives judged according to the book, not according to what we think, how we feel, who we are, what we have accomplished or not has nothing to do with it. We need Christ in our heart and in our life because I'm going to show you a few of the, of the commandments of God here in just a few moments. And verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So Adam sinned, and by him the whole world was condemned. And that's why people say, was that fair? Was that fair? Well, let me tell you. Was it fair for one man, Jesus Christ, to leave heaven and come down to earth and die and take the sins of the whole world on his body, on the tree, to redeem mankind? Was that fair? Who was Jesus? What was fair to Jesus? The righteousness of God so loved the world. He so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that you could have life. Wow, that brings chills all over me. And that made us dear children of God to walk after him and to love him and to follow him and all those things. So the, 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 the dis, disobedience. And uh, I want to show you Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. And he's speaking to the believers, to those who have accepted him. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's us, he's saying now that you were once a sinner. But God, through Christ Jesus, quickened you. That word quicken means to be made alive in Christ. Wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversations in past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. By faith, you're saved by grace through faith. Romans tells us of faith to be saved comes by hearing, <clears throat> and hearing comes by the word of God. So as you hear the word of God, you can believe, and God will give you the measure of faith to be saved that he can quicken you and make you alive in Christ Jesus by your faith through his mercy and his grace, and he paid the price at Calvary. So that's the important thing right there, all right? Uh, back to Genesis for just a moment. Uh, Satan came in the garden deceived Eve, questioned God, and she listened without checking with her husband before she ate. The Bible said when she saw that the tree was good for fruit, she coveted it, she took it, and she ate it, and then she tried to hide away her and her husband from God. That's the steps of sin, okay? You see it, you covet it, you partake of it, and then you try to hide from God because that separates you from God. So God came. God came with, with, with a lot of power. And you know what? Just as the, the, the I'll just call it the snake, the snake and the serpent, that deceived Eve, it was his fault to deceive her. And then the woman took of the fruit, fruit, and then she gave to her husband, and he ate also. So right in the same order that they sinned, God's judgment came. And uh, I want to show you, first of all, it came to the serpent. In verse 14 of chapter 3, the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And of course, that serpent was the devil who already had hell prepared for him and all of his fallen angels. But that serpent was cunning and clever and the, the most beautiful uh, creatures that God had made. 
That's what the devil does. He takes the beauty of the things that God's made and twists them into something wicked and awful, all right? He's a deceiver and a liar, and, and he's not your friend. And then he comes after the serpent's judgment here. He, and by the way, this is the first uh, Bible prophecy that, that he gave because um, he, he, in verse 15 is the first Bible prophecy. And he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and, the, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, which is to the snake, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's the Bible prophecy. So the serpent's head was crushed, right, when, when he did this. God's judgment was passed. So he dealt with the snake, gave that first uh, that first uh, Bible prophecy commandment, and now he deals directly to the woman. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall have rule over thee. For the women lost a lot when Eve messed up as well. A man and an Adam. And so here were the, all guilty. So that's what he said. And then he goes right straight to Adam. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hath eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field, and in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, and dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The moment they disobeyed God, physical death happened and started. Okay? So, you know what? You can, my man told me one time, I said, what do you, what do you think you'll do when the first thing you want to do when you get to heaven? He said, I'm going to, I'm going to punch Adam right in the nose. He said, for all the time I had to punch a time clock. Amen? But, it became very terrible for mankind. But God, that's why it became so wonderful that God interceded. But with this downfall of the human race, disobeying God, uh, Adam and Eve had no caution. She was deceived. He deliberately partook of that. And when you deliberately go and disobey God, there's consequences. And when we disobey God in anything, there's consequences. There's ramifications that we have to pay for that we brought on ourselves. And so most of the time, the real trouble that we have, we bring it on ourselves. All right. So I want us to look at some results now, uh, some, some more results of disobedience. Death passed upon the whole human race. Judgment directly came from God. And as I look at some other examples in the Bible, I see some great examples. Uh, I don't have time to go into detail about these things. You'll, be, you'll know, note, of the, and probably by memory, all of the things I'm going to bring you now. But I want to mention King Saul. King Saul was the one when the people cried back in Samuel to give us a king. Everybody else had a king. Well, in the will of God, David was to be the king, the first king of Israel. But the people kept crying, give us a king. Oh, say so, God, I talked about that permissive will of God, allowed Saul to come on. All right, and now you, you, you find out that God said, as long as Saul obeys my commandments, 
I will be upon him, and I will and I will help him and permit him to do this. But when he leaves my commandments, the judgment of God comes because God always has to judge children. The wrath of God cometh upon children of disobedience. All right, please let that note that we started with sink in. The children of wrath comes upon oh, disobedience. So there's a battle. And there, uh, God said, you go in, you take the spoils, you destroy the king and his kingdom, and livestock, and take no rewards. And what did Saul do? He kept back part of the cattle to offer his sacrifices back to God, which was a cursed thing. That was just about as bad as, uh, as Cain offering his offering to God out of the cursed ground. And so he disobeyed God. And what happened? Uh, you know, uh, when this prophet dealt with him, he said, hey, you know, uh, to, 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 be, oh, to obey is better than sacrifice. Because if you, you disobey God, what did you do? What did it bring? Rebellion. He rebelled against what God said. He did the opposite. And then, uh, and it's a sin of witchcraft. You, you, if, you're not, if you're going against God, you, you're going for the devil. Okay? Disobedience is, is the opposite spectrum. And so we, we are to always obey. So he lost his kingship right there for disobeying God. A great price to pay. Next, I want to, I'm thinking of the strong, what they say is the strongest physical man in the world, which was Samson. Samson, was he's portrayed as really, really strong. He made a Nazarite vow. that, And his secret thing between him and God was he was not to let a razor come upon his locks. He had a bona fide, don't you ever cut your hair as a man. He's go, he'd be criticized in our day and time today. But you know how he fooled around. He was a jokester. He played with riddles. He played with the lives of women. And he played with one too long. And you would have thought, you would have thought after the first time that woman, he laid his head in her lap, oh, tell me your power, tell me your power. He told her the wrong power, okay? And when he was asleep, she called the Philistines. And he rose up and said, so, you didn't tell me the right thing. And three, on the third time, he told her the truth. A razor, if I cut my hair, I'll lose my power. And she cut his hair. And then the Bible said when the Philistines came to get him, said he arose and shook himself, said, I'll, I'll do this as I have a four time but his strength was gone because now God wasn't with him anymore. And you know what happened to him? He ended up, the penalty for Samson, he ended up blind. They punched out his eyes. They put him at the mill to grind, a heavy grindstone, and worked him physically. Yeah, and then it ended up in his death when he went into the temple and re repented in God, he said, Guess, give me my strength back one more time. And when God gave him the strength, he crushed the pillows and the building fell on him and it cost him death. Uh, just one more I have time to mention and you'll recognize him. That was back in the book of Judges. And you'll recognize that another man by the name of Achan, when they, God was giving them the battle and the 
walls of Jericho fell and that great miracle as they marched around the city and the walls came down. And God said, all the spoils of Jericho belong to God. They come into the treasury of the Lord and told the armies, you go and, and, you, and you go in there and you possess it and you take it for God for the temple. And what did Achan do when he was all alone? He found in one of the tents a Babylonian garment and gold and silver and things that should have went to the temple of God. And he took them and put them under his stuff hid the, the way. Oh, does God see when nobody else sees? Yes, little children. God sees everything in the dark. When you're all alone, the decisions that you will make. And he saw Achan, and all of a sudden God was displeased because he stole from the treasury of God. Can I tell you, beloved Christians, we can't afford to steal from the treasury of God. We can't afford to rob God of tithes and offerings and stuff like that. We need to be honest with God and, and open with God. And by the way, in just a week or two, a couple of weeks, I'm going to have Brother Aaron to bring a, a message in this Bible class upon biblical tithes and offerings because it's for our benefit because that's what it is. The more you give, the more God gives back to you. And not to rob God, but to bless God. And, and it's a part of your worship. When the offering plates go by and money's asked for, God needs money too, all right? And it's up to every individual what you're going to do between you and God because he individually blesses you. He's got your, your back, everything you have that God will give you, all right? So remember, if you give to God, God will give it back and double it up. That's just guaranteed by the word of God. That will be a, a beautiful lesson. Don't, don't miss a, a time to hear Brother Aaron as he teaches on tithes and offerings. But back to this, he stole, okay? Now, God is upset. Well, there's a battle that needs to be fought. The men of Ahai was uh, giving them a problem. So they sent, they sent, I think, 3,000 people out enough to take Ahai. Guess what? When they got that there, Ahai won the battle. 36 men of Israel died. And when they tucked their tail and run back home, there were widows, 36 of them, paid with their life. Why? Because God wasn't in their, on their side in that battle. Why? Because there's sin in the camp. You have to get the sin out of the camp. So God got with the leaders, and he said, accountability. So tribe by tribe, 12 tribes, tribe by tribe and family to family, nobody could admit the, the stealing, and God knew. See, God knew who the guilty one was and where the stuff was. And they got down to Achan, and they found him guilty. And guess what? Not only did 36 men lose their life because God was, there was sin in the camp. He took Achan and his wife and his family and his possessions and all that he had, stoned them to death, cost them their lives. There is a supreme price to pay for disobeying God. Now, in the couple of moments I have left, I've talked about the original disobedience, the results of disobedience, and I just want to talk a, a moment about our personal disobedience, all right? Remember, 
God gave us some rules. And not long ago, I preached on God's, uh, God's exceptions. There's four exceptions God has. He said, except ye repent, ye shall like those heathens perish. Except ye repent. So God's saying, you have to repent in order to be saying, that's a changing of your mind about where you're going with your life. And, and except the man be born again of the spirit and of the water, which is the word of God, he will not ne never see the kingdom of God. That's one of God's exceptions. To repent and to be born again. To put it another way, to be saved. To become one of God's children is a necessity and a command of God. Please, everyone that's saved in this room has been obedient to accepting Christ. If you've never been obedient in accepting him as your personal savior, you need to change your philosophy quick. Because except you repent, except you be born again, you cannot go to heaven. And except you be converted and become as little children, that's listening, being humble, believing easy, trusting, and obeying. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. It doesn't say trust and disobey. You understand? That's why I'm teaching on disobedience because that's the snake you want to stay away from. All right, because there's consequences. James chapter 4, verse 17 says, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So if you know it's good and it's the right thing to do and you do it not, it just puts the pressure of sin. Unsaved people that have shut Jesus out of their life, it'll never go away until you open your heart and receive him. And today you're going to hear invitations to come and be saved. And, and, and that's it. you just come to Jesus. It's him that accepts you. It's not the church. It's, it's Jesus Christ that you need in your heart. And that's what happens when you repent and you're born again and you're saved by the grace of God. Then your life is to be converted over to new things. And old things pass away, and all things become new. And if you know it's the right thing to do, is to come and open your heart and be saved, then do it. What do we do about obeying? Just Nike has a good slogan. Just do it. Amen? Now, that doesn't apply to things that you should, that you intend to do that's wrong. But when it comes to the commands of God, I think Nike hit the nail right on the head. You don't have to pray about it. You don't have to think about it. You better just do it. All right? If you know to do good, to do it not to him of the sin. And Proverbs chapter 1, uh, verse 24, it's Jesus said, I have called and I've counseled you, refused I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. I will laugh at your calamity. I'll mock when your fear cometh. When desolation comes to your life as a whirlwind, God said, you'll call upon me and then I will not hear. Because God said, I will turn you over to the fruit of your own ways. So if you want to reject Jesus, help yourself. But in eternity, loss without God is the consequence. That's not a wise thing to do. The wise thing to do is open your heart and repent and get saved. The next wise thing to do is as dear children, beloved, 
follow me as dear children and walk circumspectly after the commandments of God, and you'll be blessed and blessed beyond all measure. The wrath of God cometh upon children of disobedience. That means you should follow all of the commandments of God and do them. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bless our morning service, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.